Volume 8, Chapter 7, Count Roseblade The next day Our family gathered in the castle's lounge, with Nick sitting on the couch with his hands on his head. Nix, what were you thinking, hugging an unmarried lady? Dad said in a panic, but if this was a normal woman, it wouldn't have been a problem. The problem is that she is an unmarried daughter of a count. Nix makes an excuse for last night. You're wrong. I couldn't leave her alone. Besides, she looked so beautiful yesterday. The family's eyes were cold as they looked at Nix, who said he couldn't leave her alone because she looked so weak the two cruel ones are Jenna and Finley. I'm sure it was all calculated, right? Ah, uh, I know what you mean. It's like if you create an atmosphere, you win. They seemed to think that Nix had fallen into Dorothea San's trap. In the first place, there was no way Nix could easily get close to the young countess. Jenna remembered last night's party. There were many things that were unnatural, right? Nix raised his face when he heard that words. If you knew it, tell me. I'm not interested in your love life. Nevertheless, why are men are so popular? Leon's like that, but I didn't expect Nix to be the same. I wonder if the brothers have the constitution to be favored by unreachable ladies? Finley looks at Colin, who is sitting on the couch, tilting her head. Is Colin going to marry a somewhere young lady? Am married, I, I am not particularly. Seeing Colin so flustered, Finley must have felt like teasing him. She closed the distance and pointed her finger at the tip of Colin's nose. It's too much for little Colin, isn't it? A wimp Colin is always hiding behind Noel. I'm not a wimp. When they were about to start fighting with each other, Mom pulled them apart. Don't come to other people's houses and start to fight. Why can't our children be quiet? Jenna laughs at Finley, who is flustered. Fighting with Colin, you're also a kid. It's proof that I am young. Unlike Wanichan. What? It's true, isn't it? Yesterday, when you mentioned that you had just graduated from the school, all the men left. As for me, I've had a lot of good-looking guys come up to me when they learned I haven't entered the school yet. Oh, only a blind man would choose childish Finley over me. Isn't it the other way around? The men who chose me, the one with a future, over my sister, the one with no future. If there was a daughter of a baron and had just graduated from the academy, she would have been shunned because she was considered a terrible generation. Not long ago, the daughters of barons and viscountesses carried around subhuman slaves as their exclusive servants. That used to be the norm, but now values are changing. No, is it more like correcting? Anyway, the situation is changing. In the midst of all this, Finley is also preparing to enter school and will be a freshman when spring break is over. I muttered, letting out a small sigh as I looked at Finley, who was glaring at Jenna. A little sister is terrible. Finley is terrible, but she reminds me of my little sister, Marie, from a previous life. In the Republic of Arzal, my inner evaluation of older sister has become my sister who is not related to me by blood is a good person thanks to Louise San. I looked at Jenna and saw that she was staring at Finley in a terrifying way. When Mom saw this, she held her forehead with her hand as if her head hurt. I can't help but say what I think. Can we trade Jenna with Louise San? Hearing my true feelings, Luxion makes fun of me as usual. Didn't you say that the existence of a big sister was harmful? Do you think Louise is less harmful? Looking at Louise San, you would think Wanichan is not so bad, right? A gentle big-breasted big sister who spoils me is more than welcome. When I say this, remembering Louise San, the sisters who stare at each other, but Jenna turns to me with a look of disgust on her face. You're really disgusting. What do you want from a big sister? Am I sexually desiring a big sister? That's how Jenna misunderstood me and she distanced herself from me as she hugged herself. You don't have to hate it that much. Nobody's looking at you sexually. Seeing you naked doesn't turn me on one bit. 
then, what if the target was Louise? It's not something to be looked at sexually. You're being too rude if you see Louise San naked. It was Master who said that rude thing to your sister. Isn't this how you treat your own sister? When I laugh, my family looks at me in disgust, saying, this guy again however, when the topic of Louise San came up, mom's gaze became stern. Dad forced the topic back to Nick's and started thinking about the future. Anyway, the Count closed his eyes at the time. Nix and I will go apologize to him, but you guys need to be quiet. Especially Leon. Eh? Don't you dare make more noise. Listen, absolutely not. I'm a quiet guy, basically. If anyone should be paying attention, it's Jenna and Finley, right? When I turned to the troublesome sisters, they looked at me with a strange look on their faces. What is this guy talking about? This foolish brother really doesn't get it, does he? We don't act out of line like you do. Why don't you take a look at yourself? They are really annoying sisters. I changed my opinion about a big sister a little, but a little sister is still no good. Thanks to Louise San, I've come to accept the existence of a big sister, but for me, with Finley and Marie, a little sister is still a harmful thing. I get up from the couch's dad and Nick's head off to apologize. They give me a dubious look, so I suggest that I go with them. I'm going too. I'm still a marquee, you know. Maybe this title will help a little? A marquee in name only, but it's better than not being there to apologize. After much concern, they allowed me to accompany them. I'm so happy to have a son-in-law like you. The meeting with Count Roseblade took place in a reception room in the castle. This place, with its luxurious furniture, was quite glamorous, perhaps to show off the wealth of the Roseblade family. In a luxurious room that would have made us poor Baron feel small, the Count Roseblade greeted us with a big smile on his face. He spreads his hands toward Nick's, but the person himself is confused or stunned for a moment before finally asking back. S. Son-in-law? Since you accept Dorothea, didn't you hug her on the balcony? Count Roseblade is smiling all the time, but his tone sounds like, you put your hands on my daughter and you're not gonna take responsibility? When I look at Dad, he's too flustered to be useful. And no, Count. A are you really going to make her marry me? I'm a nobleman from the countryside, and my rank is different from yours? In a world where the status system still exists, there are many troublesome rules for marriage. Sometimes, in order to achieve a marriage of different status, some people give up their status and honor to elope and lose everything. By the way, it was the five idiots who did it for Marie. Does that sound like a good story, if you ask me? In their case, it's a terrible story, they've actually been tricked by Marie. Marie, who tricked them ended up having five unemployed people who didn't make enough money, which is funny. However, there are always exceptions to everything. Count Roseblade's gaze turned to me for a moment. Don't worry about it. Nix Cohen's little brother, Leon Dono, is a marquis. There is no one who would complain about the family of a hero who rose to become a marquis in a single generation. Since I've been promoted to the rank of Marquis, the title structure has become ambiguous. I feel bad for Nix, so I talk to Count Roseblade. Can Dorothea Sand live in the countryside? Unlike in the city, we're really in the rural area. My dad and Nix both nodded repeatedly. Can a daughter who grew up in the city live in the countryside? The standard of living in this world is often very different even in the same country. Like in the previous world, no matter where you live, you have access to electricity, gas, and water. This is not that blessed environment like that. For that reason, the girls at the school hated the countryside nobles. But the Count of Roseblade says not to worry. Dorothea is prepared for it. She says she'll live anywhere if she becomes Nixcoan's wife. If push comes to shove, the Roseblade family will be there to help. They are going to support the Bardafault family for their daughter. That sounds great, but it's too convenient for us. I know it's rude of me, but I can't help but ask Count Roseblade. 
That's very thoughtful of you. I can't help but wonder if there's something behind it. I ask nervously, and count Roseblade's guards, sensing my rudeness and asking, try to brace themselves. However, Count Roseblade stopped them. It's important not to jump at a sweet deal. Because those who jump unguarded at the treasure in front of them will not live long. I'll give you credit for being cautious. Apparently, he liked it. Count Roseblade turned his back on us, he looked a little concerned. He let out a small sigh and turned to look at us. His expression was, what can I say, a troubled look. Since we're about to make a connection, there's no point in trying to hide it. In the first place, Nix Cohen, do you know Dorothea's hobby, right? Nix remembers the collar and is troubled, but affirms it. Why yes, of course, I'll never tell anyone about it. It's natural. You have to hide your family's shame. The family part was strangely emphasized. It's as if he's saying, you are already a family member and a person who shares the secret. Nick says a lot of negative things about himself. I am not quite up to par, and I'm not worthy of Dorothea San. Besides, it's Leon who's amazing, not me. It's also important to admit your flaw. You're a sincere and good man. I don't have any achievements or anything. I'm buying your future. Besides, Nix Cohen played an active role in defeating the Sky Pirates, didn't you? You saved my daughters, too. You've achieved enough. We are poor, and your daughter will have a hard time. The Roseblade family will do everything in our power to support you, so don't worry. If there's anything you need, be it people, money, or goods, just let us know. I'm a mediocre adventurer and I've never accomplished anything. Nix has become an adventurer at the school, but like me, he doesn't have a clear track record of conquering dungeons or finding treasure. For the Roseblade family, who consider the adventurer part to be important, Nix would be a problem before evaluation. But still, Count Roseblade does not change his attitude. Do you want to go on an adventure? Then you should join the adventure we're planning. I'm looking for a team to discover a new floating island. If you succeed, Nix Cohen, you can take the credit. And no, that's bad. I don't think those things mean anything unless you accomplish them yourself. What? Do you want to do it yourself? Nix Cohen is also a good adventurer. No matter what he says, Count Roseblade will take it favorably. Are they misunderstanding each other? No, this is different. Luxion, who was floating by my side, seemed to have noticed Count Roseblade's feelings. From the flow of the current conversation, I'd say that Count Roseblade really wants to get Master's brother. That's right. Nix might not be able to get away. If I translate the words of Count Roseblade, he's saying, you're the only one I won't let go. Nix was confused and very impatient, as if anything he said could be interpreted in any positive way. Count Roseblade said to Nix. You'll be staying with us for a while, right? In the meantime, you can get to know each other better. Someone, call Dorothea and have her show you around. Ha! Huh. When the knight went to call Dorothea, Dad, who had not been able to keep up with the conversation, finally opened his mouth. What am I supposed to do? That's how I feel, too. The Courtyard of the Roseblade Family Castle While Nix was being shown around the castle by Dorothea San, we were invited to tea by Deirdre Senpai. Chairs and tables were set up in the courtyard to enjoy the tea prepared by the Roseblade family. The tea and sweets were delicious, but the topic of conversation was still about Nix. It wasn't a dark story, but it wasn't bright either. I think Nix is already finished? Many people who attended the party saw Nix and Dorothea San hugging each other. I'm sure many people have heard the stories. Are they about to get married? And other rumors. In the first place, when the Roseblade family came to the Bardafault family, it was known to those with sharp ears. Clara Senpai, who had been kept stuck in the party, looked a little dissatisfied. The Roseblade family are rude to their benefactors, aren't they? 
The Atli family sent out airships and troops to help Deirdre Senpai, but this is cruel treatment. She seemed annoyed that she was being kept busy, but she was not angry. Deirdre Senpai laughs and accepts sarcasm. Isn't it you who meddled in the matter between the Bardafault family and us? You've been asked to probe into my parents' home, haven't you? Picking up the cup, Clara Senpai took a sip of tea without answering. The atmosphere is not stiff, but I'm tired, they try to find out each other's real intentions, so I'll return the talk. I'm sorry to do this in front of you, Deirdre Senpai, but if Aniki refuses to get married, I'll support him. If Nix really didn't want it, I was going to help him turn down the marriage. Even though she heard of my decision, Deirdre Senpai didn't blame me one bit. In other words, if he accepts, you won't object, right? What about Angelica? Are you going to interfere? When everyone's eyes were on Ange, she quietly set down her cup. I'll go along with Leon's opinion. However, if you touch Leon, I won't show any mercy, even if it's you. Deirdre, you'll have to bear with just taking in the Bardafault family. Clarice too, don't get your hopes up. I'm seriously saying it. Ange's red eyes were glowing like red jewels, intimidating the two of them. However, both Deirdre and Clarice didn't seem to be phased at all. Both of them smiled and didn't answer anything. The only thing that bothered me was that my name was mentioned. Luxion, why did my name come out? The Thoughtless Master is a kind of a healing presence in this place. I mean, the atmosphere in this place is so bad that a being like Master would be healing. I can't grasp the situation, and Luxion is sarcastic with me. It's always happening, so I decided to start over. I'm a simple young man, so I'm not good at finding out someone's real intentions. But you're good at it, aren't you? What do you mean? Because you are an artificial intelligence with a black heart. I'm no match for master. And how can you call yourself simple? When Luxion and I started talking, Ange let out a small sigh. Since Leon seems to be bored, this conversation is over. We'll leave the two of them to their own business, and watch them from the outside. She said she could leave the decision to Nix and the others to decide, but as a nobleman, would that be okay? As for me, I appreciate Ange's opinion. However, the noble society I'm imagining seems to be very strict about marriage, though. It's actually a lot of trouble to go through. I got Luxion, went wild, and before I knew it, I had made a big name for myself, so I was able to ignore those troublesome ties. So I assumed that it was usually much harder. Well, there are other ties outside the marriage, and it's a real hassle. You don't care either way? Marriage among the nobility is pretty loose. Ange narrowed her eyes. Your relationship can be special, too. Rather than that, can we talk about something fun? Since Leon doesn't like black-hearted talk, I'd like to have fun with other topics. Ange wants to change the subject for me, but isn't that a little bit sarcastic towards Deirdre Senpai and Clara Senpai? Also, is it an expectation for me who was just saying un, -un when they probe each other? Then Livia clapped her hands. Then I want to hear about the story of the floating island. What Livia talked about was the search for a new floating island. Leon San told me that the Roseblade family is looking for a new floating island, right? Is it that easy to find a floating island? When questioned by Livia, Deirdre Senpai said, it's not easy, before explaining in detail. It's hard to discover continents now. Once we find a reasonably large floating island, we can move it and connect it to expand our land. Even a small floating island is very large, isn't it? Can you really move it? I've never seen one in person, and I still can't believe it. We'll be using magic to manipulate and move the floating stones that make the land float. However, it's also very difficult to move. If it fails, it could be a serious accident. The land of this world floats because of the existence of gravity-defying ores called floating stones. With it, you could easily build an airship. After all, the floating force is always available. 
Now, all we need is to get the propulsion and we can get the airship moving. Deirdre Senpai talks about the difficulty of finding a floating island. It doesn't mean that any floating island is acceptable. It doesn't matter what kind of floating island it is, because it doesn't make any sense to bring an empty wasteland floating island and connect it. If it's a rough, rocky floating island, it's rather easy to find. What we want is a floating island with rich soil. Clara Senpai, who was listening to the conversation, told me how to use the rough, rocky floating island. If it's a deserted floating island, you can make a lot of money by digging up the floating stones and selling them. Besides, there are other ores to be found on those floating islands. It all depends on how you use it, I think. If it were easy, we wouldn't have any trouble. We'll have to dig around and examine the rocky floating island, and if we don't find anything, it will be a great loss. Perhaps interested in their conversation, and joins them. If it costs so much to transport them, why don't we just send in a research team? Deirdre Senpai rejected Ange's suggestion that they should send a survey team and carry the resources when they are discovered. How many supplies do you think it would take to run a group of that size through an empty wasteland? If there's nothing there, we'll end up in the red even if we recover the floating stones. It's worth a try. Even if you fail a few times, once you succeed, there's a chance you'll be in the black, right? As long as we end up in the black, there's no problem. The three of them went straight into the fun, but Livia, who had asked the question, was having trouble speaking up. I'll talk to her instead. What got you interested in the floating islands? Noelle Sand was concerned about a lot of things. Look, she said it would be a pity to leave the sapling chon in the pot forever. I looked at Noelle sitting in her wheelchair, she had just finished her tea and was putting the cup down. I guess she heard me and Livia talking about why she was interested in the floating island. That's right. But the location of the planting site is important, so I thought that if there was a floating island with good conditions, that would be a good place. Sapling chan will definitely create a concession problem in the future, so the location of the planting will be important. My parents' house is also a problem. It wouldn't be funny if in the future, me and Nick's our children and grandchildren would be fighting over the rights to sapling chan. I have already surveyed and picked up a few locations of floating islands. Eh? Is that so? Yes. We also have to prepare a new territory for Master. That's right. Because I gave my utopia to the kingdom. The floating island with the hot springs, which was supposed to be my territory, was given to the kingdom to keep Marie and the others under house arrest. Because of them, I lost the place where I could live the ideal slow life that I made Luxion prepare for me. When I was talking with Livia and Noel, I feel that Deirdre Senpai and Clara Senpai glancing at us. Luxion gave them both a single look. I was curious about Luxion's behavior as he looked at them silently, so I asked him why. Why are you looking at them? It's nothing. Meanwhile. At that time, Nix was sitting on a bench with Dorothea in a different courtyard from Leon and the others. They were sitting side by side, with a gap of about three fists between them. He's really giving me a hard time. Well. It was Nix, but before he knew it, he was complaining to Dorothea. Before she knew it, he was revealing his normal appearance and speaking in a broken tone. In the school, he does whatever he wants, and me, his older brother, is looked at negatively. I'm treated like the big brother of the fiend. They're wrong. I'm normal. He's the only one in our family who's different. That must have been hard for you? The boys hate me for being Leon's brother, and the girls are scared of me. And on top of that, I can't even get married because Leon has a strange promotion. Being Leon's older brother is a lot harder for Nix to deal with. Nix's good nature shows when he doesn't think about taking advantage of his brother's position. Dorothea touched Nix's hand nervously. I if it were me, I wouldn't let such a reputation mislead me. Dorothea San. It was Nix who squeezed her hand and blushed. That Aniki isn't dissatisfied at all? 
I can't believe you're enjoying your date after making people so worried. I ordered Luxion to check on the two of them. The women were intrigued by the image of the two projected on the table. Deirdre Senpai is wiping her tears with her fingertips. That one Isama is having a normal date. If it were the old one Isama, she would have put a collar on the gentleman and taken him around. Apparently, just having a normal date was enough to make him an animal of sorts, but I couldn't help but point it out. Didn't Deirdre Senpai also say that you wanted to make me your pet, right? It was on the way back from a school trip when we encountered the principality. However, Ange, who did not know about this story, glared at Deirdre Senpai. I hadn't even heard of it. When Ange sees Livia, she tell her everything without concealment. Indeed, she did say that. When Leon San said that he couldn't abandon Ange, but he didn't care about the others, she said she liked his bold attitude. I is that so? Yuamu, that's not good. When Ange heard Livia's explanation, she glanced at me and blushed. Stop it. I'm embarrassed, too. At that time, I was so impatient to save Ange that I said some lines that I normally wouldn't have said. Livia was smiling when she saw me hiding my face with my hands. Men yearn to be a knight who saves the princess for once, don't they? That's what Leon San said, and tried his best to save Ange. When I fall silent, Ange clears her throat in embarrassment. Hmm. That's enough of that, Livia. Leon's having trouble. That's right. But Leon San looked really wonderful at that time. Seeing me blushing, both Deirdre Senpai and Clara Senpai gave Livia a sharp look. If someone flirts in front of you, you might get angry. Noel raised his voice when she saw movement in the image. Ah, they're holding hands. Isn't Nick San happy? They seem to be a perfect match, no matter how you look at it. Livia, who was happily watching the two of them, agreed with Noel. That's right. The two of them seemed to be having some fun. I raised my head and looked at Nix, who looked happy, and I envied him. I have my own lovely fiancés, but I envy Nix, who is facing one woman. To me, who has been tied to multiple women, a pure love like Nix's looks dazzling. Let's be clear. I have no regrets about my current situation. But I also envy Nix. Then Luxion makes a decisive statement. Both their heart rates and body temperatures are rising rapidly. Luxion, tell me clearly. And what's that supposed to mean? They're getting excited. Something like hate, no feeling like that, right? I judge it highly unlikely. I see. Everyone who was listening to the conversation between me and Luxion had a look on their face that said, there are better ways to say that. No matter how we mended it, all the data proved that Nix was overjoyed. Not too long ago, he was complaining that he wasn't good enough for her, that she didn't have the right personality for him, and now he's excited about her. What is he? Despite the fact that you have been complaining a lot, you still fall easily for a beautiful woman. I was going to lend you a hand if you were going to refuse, but I don't care anymore. When I show a throwaway attitude, Luxion confirms. Then, do you agree with him marrying Dorothea? Because he looks happy. In the video, Nix looked like he and Dorothea San were just an innocent couple. I get out of my seat and leave. Where are you going? At Dad's and Mom's. I was thinking to tell them that Aniki seemed to get along well with Dorothea San. I'm sure they'll feel a little better when they hear that. He's really a troublesome big brother. When Nix parted from Dorothea and returned to the room, he found that Count Roseblade was there for some reason, even though the room was used by the Bardafault family. My son. Then he walks over to Nix and calls him a son. Count? Eh, why are you here? As Count Roseblade approached Nix, he grasped Nix's right hand with both hands and shook it up and down. I've heard the story. I'm glad you've finally made up your mind. Ha! Huh. Nix was surprised, but the family around him applauded as they surrounded him. 
his parents were teary-eyed and happy. Nix, I won't complain if it's your choice. D Dad? I'm worried that you won't get along with the daughter of the Count, but you've always been reliable, I rest assured. Nix, congratulations. Mom? What are you talking about? Count Roseblade speaks happily to Nix, who can't grasp the situation. I've heard from Marquis Leondano. If you're not dissatisfied, tell me first. But you must be sincere and a bit reserved. As the father of my daughter, I feel safe. And no, I haven't said anything about accepting her yet, though. The conversation was lively, and it was true that he was not dissatisfied. However, he never talked about accepting the marriage. Besides, it was unlikely that anyone had heard their conversation. How did they know I was having a good time? Count Roseblade, who had been smiling at the confused Nicks, narrowed his eyes. His hands were clenched together, and his hands were making creaking sounds. Are you dissatisfied with my daughter? I, I don't think so. But I'm not sure I was worthy. I think she's a charming person, but I don't think her personality matches mine. Count Roseblade smiles again. Then no problem. I assure you that you are worthy of my daughter. He had the attitude that he would not let anyone complain. How could this be happening? Nix asked himself, and then he saw Leon in his vision, grinning and applauding. D don't tell me, this guy? Nix asks Leon. Leon, are you the mastermind? Mastermind? What are you talking about? I just told Dad and Mom about it because you seem to be getting along. And then they said, if it's Nix's decision. How did you know we were getting along? You weren't there, were you? It was Luxion who answered about it. I reported it. Incidentally, judging from your heart rate, body temperature, and facial expressions, I judged that you two were in a state of excitement and reported that as well. Luxion, did you help him too? Stop Leon like you always do. From a third party's point of view, the big brother Kuan is now in love with Dorothea. Angelica and the others are all in agreement, so I'm sure of it. Shall I show you the change in your heart rate when she held your hand? You were very excited about Dorothea, weren't you? Didn't it make you throb when she held your hand? Even Nix was embarrassed when he heard that. There's a proper way to say it, right? Count Roseblade, who was listening to the conversation, grinned. Did Dorothea excite you? As a father, I have mixed feelings about this, but it doesn't change the fact that you have affection for my daughter. Let's begin the engagement process right away. And my mental preparedness is. Dumbstruck by Nix's lack of understanding, Leon let out a sigh and said. Aniki is hetair. Note, which one is suited for this? Wimp? Wuss? Coward? Chicken? Nix thought. Don't want to be told by you, this hetair guy. Ange, Livia, and Noel, who were watching the situation, and the family, thought and then Luxion was speaking for them. That's not something Master can say.